Hi, this is Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse. Welcome to my 2023 budget presentation. So we always start with our bottom line up front. What does the budget mean? What does it stand for? What's the key takeaway? So number one, it's a responsible budget for the taxpayers. Number two, it provides essential services. And number three, it provides and prepares the county for the future. So the key highlights are as follows. There's a decrease in the tax levy. It's the lowest tax rate in 46 years. Continued growth for our sales tax. Fund balance remains strong. Our tourism is thriving. Essential county services is expanding and we are prioritizing our infrastructure. So the next big question is where does the money come from and where does the money go? So the first pie is where the money comes from. Like what does it take to fund Orange County government? The biggest source, it says other revenues, but the biggest source within other revenues is sales tax, as opposed to local towns and villages which are balanced on property tax. The next biggest source for us is actually real property tax, which is your houses, your businesses. And then it teeters off from there to state, federal uh, aid, and then some surplus that we use to balance the budget in, in past years. Then the next big question, the next big pie, is where does the money go? The money goes predominantly to, number one, human services. Then it goes in, into a number of other categories. Uh, health services, general government support, public safety, physical services, economic development, uh, intergovernmental related, and then also finally teetering off in the debt service, those categories. As I said, the county is uh, fundamentally fueled and, and functioned by sales tax. So our sales tax over the years has been steadily growing. We took a little bit of a dip in 2020, obviously due to the COVID pandemic, but the county remains strong. So if you go through 2018, $176 million of revenue, 2019, $177 million, 2020, $154 million, again, due to COVID, 2021, the COVID rebound to that $203 million of revenue. This is again, all sales tax. Then 2022, uh, which we are looking at $224 million. And then for uh, next year, we're uh, continuing to look at increases in sales tax. And I'm gonna get into some of our opinions why we think it's gonna continue to grow. And just for a little side point, the bottom two points, uh, the County of Orange shares sales tax with our local towns, villages, and cities. That's the local municipalities. Most counties in New York State don't do that. They just keep the sales tax for themselves. But we have a very lucrative sharing agreement with the local towns, villages, and cities. And for example, last year we shared $84 million of sales tax. We're projecting $103 million for 2023. So let's talk about hotel motel tax. So the county generates millions of dollars a year from hotel motel tax. Let's go through the last couple of years. 2018, we brought in 3.9 million. 2019, we brought in 4.1. It dipped in 2020, obviously due to COVID. So that was 2.4 million in revenue. And then 2021, it uh, came back with 5.2. Uh, year to date, we're at over $3.6 million. We're looking at over $6 million that we're budgeting for next year for hotel motel tax revenue. And the reason being is we have a number of hotels that are on the planning board uh, schedules now, but we also have a number of them under construction. So we're taking those into consideration. So the next slide, we talk about real property tax. So this is really what you're getting taxed for the house you own, for the business you own, for any type of property, that your property taxes is as a smaller portion to function county government. The 2014 tax rate was 3.8. Uh, 2022, where we are today, th this year's budget, 2022 budget, we're at 3.4. I am proposing to the legislature a 2.7% tax rate, which is going to be the lowest in 46 years. Uh, so I was two years old when it was this low that I'm proposing. And in addition to the tax rate being the lowest in 46 years, it's the seventh time in a row in the last, that we, in the last seven years that we've actually uh, cut the tax rate. So these are all good positive impacts for the taxpayer. So tax rates, numbers, percentages, what does this mean to the actual average family and business in Orange County? So when you talk about the average family and business, they're going to see a actual tax cut in their county tax bill. The average county family pays about $1,000 a year in property tax 
for county services. This is your 911, your DPW, your mental health, the number of different uh, services that county government pays. The average tax uh, payer family contributes about $1,000. So what does this new budget equal? It equals on the average a $67 per family cut, which is good. It's uh, obviously going in the right direction. It's cutting and not asking for an increase. Some municipalities will see a higher number, some will see a lower number depending on the strength of their local municipality and their uh, equalization rates. But uh, thankfully, it'll be, a rate, it'll be a cut for businesses and families universally. So getting into the weeds a little bit, but uh, also very importantly, we need to talk about the tax rate and we, have to need, we also have to talk about the tax value, the real property value of the county. So if you look at the first chart, it's the tax rate. And I've said we've been going down and down and down. That's the lower amount that we've taken from the average taxpayer for their property tax. But if you look at the real property value, that's an also positive indicator. So the real property value shows, is the county growing in value or going down? Now, every county is not going up. Uh, so that's not how it is across New York State or across America. Uh, so we have grown over $6 billion just in the last year alone. That means your neighbor that's getting an addition on their house. That means the old, uh, you know, closed industrial site that's now been sold and now turned into a new commercial business. The value of Orange County is growing and that helps set uh, the tax property that we, that we would have property tax that we would take from you, take that away uh, and actually spread it to more and more uh, different avenues, which is a, you know, different people coming in, a new house being built, a house getting a renovation, a new company that's growing or expanding. Those all offset what it takes from you or your business. So challenges in the uncertain time. I mentioned earlier that this is a very responsible budget for the future. We don't know what that future is. So I, I put in a couple of key things, you know, the retirement contributions this year alone were supposed to be 11%. They came back from New York State Comptroller's Office at 13%. Health insurance costs are continuing to grow. Unfunded mandates continue to come, predominantly from the state of New York, but also the federal government. Medicaid is increasing. Uh, I am proposing an $890 million budget right now for the county that I am articulating to you. But the federal government and state budget, the state government and the county spend over a billion dollars in Orange County on just Medicaid alone. So my budget that I'm presenting to the public and to the legislature, which includes all sorts of services, emergency services, health, uh, that is nothing compared to the bill for Medicaid in the county alone. So that just gives you a perspective. We're also concerned about costs for Valley View. Uh, the the uh, nursing home continues to be under a lot of pressure. State and federal government uh, uh, could be cutting back on some of the aid and we've been using some of their surplus to balance the budget. So that will, that will mean that we're gonna have to contribute a little bit more every year of, of taxpayer money to make sure that we keep uh, Valley View sound. Union negotiations always have to be uh, considered. Inflation, the recession that's been looming, rising interest rates, uh, employment uh, crisis for every three jobs in America, two are vacant, one is filled. Looming war in Europe, all those things have an impact on our economy. And, and how we balance our budget. We're ready bracing for this fall for a HEAP, the heat uh, assistance for families. We're seeing a rise in cost for uh, food for the general family. So all those things come into consideration in this budget and what we're uh, keeping on our watch list. That aside, our fund balance is very strong. So for instance, when I came in in 2014, we had a $21 million surplus. 2020, we had a $50 million surplus. In 2021, we had $117 million surplus, and now we're budgeting for uh, much more for 2023. So uh, the one key takeaway with this is when we have a surplus, is that's why you're seeing a tax cut to the residents, but you're also, in the past, the county has uh, historically used some of its fund balance to balance its budget in order to make it work. I will, I'm proud to say in 2023, we are not using any fund balance to balance the budget. So these are all positive trends. Another positive trend is Moody's. Moody's is a independent financial rating organization that tells uh, 
potential bondholders and investors the strength or weakness of a municipality. So Moody's has, over the last few years, given us nothing but flying colors. We're actually going to meet with them over the next few weeks to get another evaluation. But it says the county's tax base is experiencing growth largely attributed to tourism industry, sound financial position driven by conservative budget management, which is what we do here, and a, managing, a manageable long-term liability profile. So this independent organization highlights not only some of the good trends, like they say tourism, but also the conservative budgeting, which keeps us afloat and also protects us if we head into some tough times. So one of the things we talk about a lot is tourism. And one of the key parts, in my opinion, of tourism is we have to reinvest in tourism. So how does that come from? Where does that money come from? We collect over $5 million in hotel motel tax, as well as money coming in from Airbnbs. So that money should be re not only directed towards tourism, but trying to attract more and more people here. So back in May of this year, I asked the legislature to support me in starting a Four Seasons campaign. This is a fall, winter, spring, summer campaign where we try to target not only the big attractions we have in Orange County, like the West Point, the Storm Kings, the Legolands, but also small businesses and small festivals in your local town, village, and city. So I am very happy that that is going to be a new thing that we're going to try this year. We're going to evaluate it in a year from now, whether we should ex expand it more or try something different. But that's a new thing that we're doing with tourism. So one of the great things that Orange County has to not only give and provide to the residents and the people that work in Orange County, but for also people that visit here is our parks and open space. And I am so proud that what we've been doing over the last year and what we're going to continue to do with this budget is to continue to upgrade our parks. So not only replace our playgrounds and make them modern, but also more accommodating to people with disabilities. These are the elderly people. These are the people on the autism spectrum. These are people that are with disabilities, a young boy or girl that's in a wheelchair uh, that maybe can't ex uh, approach or utilize our parks now or our playgrounds, that's all going to change with this new revitalization of our park system. We're also working very closely with the Orange County Land Trust as we start identifying some key pieces of open space, including, which we announced a few months ago, Sugarloaf Mountain and other areas as we continue to grow our open space. And finally, I have to talk about our rail trails. The uh, rail trails in Orange County We've just completed another couple sections heading through Goshen and Walk Hill and Middletown areas. But we've also identified in the last six months a new expansion going into a new direction from Chester to Salisbury Mills. That's going to open other corridors for parkland and utilization for people to get out and live healthy. So let's talk about upcoming initiatives. Some of our things that we're looking at in county government are services that we're expanding. I talked about some of the things that we're doing with parks, but we're also doing other things that we're considering. We're looking at doing some more and more school safety. As the world demands and shows around the country, we are getting more and more active in school safety than we have in the past. That involves us spending money doing exercises and implementing different types of protective measures to make sure that your and my kids are safe when they go to school. Another thing is the salary study. Uh, Orange County government is not immune to this crisis in uh, the uh, flight of employees to other jobs and looking for better salaries. So we are conducting a third party study to look at how we pay our employees and see what type of um, manners that we can rectify those. So the legislature and I will be working hand in hand on that as that comes. Another thing that we're doing, which is responsible because this is our house, we have a number of buildings besides the government center, we have a number of buildings that we have our staff working in and the public coming to do county business in that are old. So we're gonna do an asbestos abatement in all the buildings that the county operates in to make sure that it's a safe working environment for our employees and of course for the taxpayers. And finally, uh, ADA compliant upgrades. Uh, it sounds uh, that's something that, that we shouldn't even be, that it should have been done ahead of time, but we can always be doing more and doing better. So what we're doing is an analysis of all our buildings to make sure that they are accessible to all people 
including those with disabilities. I mentioned earlier that our hotels and motels are growing and the revenues that are coming from them are due to the large amount of people coming here as well as the new opportunities with new hotels coming online. Presently, we have a number of hotels for them under construction in the county, which is going to lead to 351 new rooms, uh, which will complement the 3,800 plus that we have in existing portfolio. But we have at least 15 hotels and boutiques in the uh, planning process right now, which would add another 1,500 rooms uh, for Orange County as people continue to come visit and uh, check out Orange County for what it's got to offer. I want to talk about infrastructure improvements. One of the most responsible things we can do in county government is take care of our infrastructure, our buildings, our roads, our bridges, our, our water and sewer lines, everything that we are in charge of, we need to constantly look at. We are just finishing up a multi-million dollar renovation of our homeless shelter uh, over in the, in the city of Middletown. We also have done over 20 miles of paving this year. We're gonna to continue to do more as we close out the year. 180 miles of county road has already been uh, paved since we took office eight years ago, but we're gonna to continue to do more. And then we have a number of great key, uh, very challenging, but very uh, doable bridge projects throughout the county. This is in Blooming Grove, Woodbury, Cornwall, you name it, Otisville Viaduct. So we have a number of bridges that we intend on doing in the next 12 months. Uh, they're gonna make the taxpayers proud. One of the last things I wanna mention is a flexible budget process. Okay, what does that mean? In the past, county executives by the charter for the county have presented their budget to the legislature and that's it. The legislature works on it for about a month and then back around November 15th or by then the legislature hands back the budget to the county executive with their changes and then the county executive decides what they're going to keep or not and then they hash it out at the final meeting of the year in December. Those, those days have changed. They've changed for a couple reasons. One is we have a lot of numbers that continue to come in and change throughout the budget process. For example, the hotel motel revenue that we get, I'm gonna get a new upgraded number of what we've received in mid-October. So I might go back to the legislature and ask them to amend my own budget. This happened last year. Majority of the legislature overwhelmingly welcomed uh, the working relationship that we have. Some of them didn't understand it, but I want you to understand that going forward, because of the times and because of the rapidly changing information and numbers that are coming in, we are going to have to work together and not in these separate silos that have historically happened over decades in county governments or around New York. They are going to have to be changed to a actual hand-in-hand -hand, uh, process. So that also leads me to a new sheriff that's coming. And we have a new sheriff coming after election day, there's two candidates running, and I believe it's gonna be imperative that the legislature and I sit down with that new sheriff and look at their budget for next year. Otherwise, we are going to be forced to be making a number of budget amendments mid-year in 2023. So let's avoid that, and let's give the new sheriff, that whoever that he is, because there's two men running right now, we'll sit down with them, and let's start making those changes together so they can hit the ground running January 1st without having to worry about finances. And uh, finally, finally is the streamlining of our budget process. We are very open. We have our meetings televised. But again, I intend to have a very open dialogue with the legislature as we talk about any changes to my proposed budget right now. I think it's sound. I think it's responsible. I back it up with some of the third-party validators that we've had in the past. Moody's has always said that they, it was the conservative budgeting that I bring to the table and I'm supported by, by the legislature. That is the strength of Orange County finances. So I want to continue that. And I need the legislature and the public to continue to work with me as we uh, continue to make Orange County strong. And finally, I want to thank everybody for their collaboration and their support. We have a wonderful county in Orange County. We have a number of great partners in our local supervisors, mayors, and their council members. And I continue to keep that very close relationship as we continue to be successful as a team. We've gone through some tough times in the past. We're gonna probably have some tough times in the future, but we have a plenty of, to be proud of 
and we have so much opportunity for 2023. I look forward to working with you on the budget, and I look forward to some great, great days ahead. Thank you.